Let's get started. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, uh, depending on where you're joining us in the world from. Uh, my name is CJ Ward. I'm the Director of Strategic Alliances here at Coalesce. Um, and we're really excited to talk to you guys today and, and share with you a bit um, of a story of what's been going on up in Calgary at, at Burnco. A pretty, pretty amazing story of the success that these guys have had um, in, a, in a pretty short order with what we think is the next wave of the so-called modern data stack uh, with Snowflake, Fivetran, uh, and Coalesce. Um, so really excited to show you guys what we, we've got going on here today. Um, so let's uh, let's jump into it. Um, so in terms of agenda, what we have for you today, we're going to start by uh, introducing a few of our amazing speakers, um, and then they're going to jump in to uh, what's going on at Burnco, right? So the history of of this company, kind of what the status quo was there as recently as uh, December 2021. And then kind of go into this solution, what they've been able to accomplish in the last uh, couple of months, uh, which has been extremely impressive. So excited to share with you that story today. Um, from there, we're going to jump into a product demonstration of Coalesce. It's our first public demo. We're really excited to, to show you guys what we've been working on over here. Um, and then we'll finish up with a, a Q&A session. So uh, to introduce our speakers, uh, first, we're going to have uh, Jody Swarbrick, the Senior Director of Analytics over at Burnco. She's kind of the brains behind the operation. She's going to uh, give us a background of what's been going on there and, and kind of set the stage for this project. Uh, then we have Alex Gonzalez, who's a Principal Architect at our amazing partners up in uh, Calgary, BDO Lixar. Um, he worked on implementing this solution, so he's going to kind of talk about the architecture and, and you know, why they made those, those selections. Um, and then we have Satish Jayanti, our CTO and co-founder. Um, he's going to show you guys a demo of Coalesce today. Um, so without further ado, let's jump in. Uh, Jody, I'll hand it off to you. Sounds good. You guys hear me okay? Yep. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Thanks, CJ. Yeah, let me tell you uh, a little bit about Burnco. Um, we actually kind of have a, a cool little story. We're a fourth generation family-based business uh, started right here in, in Calgary, Alberta, which is actually where I'm located. Um, most famous for the Calgary Stampede, and if you guys haven't checked that out yet, you should because it's, it's, it's a ton of fun. Um, and we're in the business of aggregate construction materials. So we specialize in um, aggregate, asphalt, and ready-mix concrete. Um, we were actually founded back in 1912 um, by James Burns, who started the company using horses and wagons. And since then, you know, 110 years later, we have over 60 locations in, in Ca Canada, Colorado, and Texas, and over 1,300 employees. Um, but in simplest terms, you know, we take big rocks and we break them down into smaller rocks. Um, obviously, there's, there's a ton more to do than just that. <laughs> There's a lot of moving parts. You know, we have customers to deal with. We have orders, dispatch. Uh, we have our own fleet of trucks. Um, as you can see in the pictures, we have over 600 trucks um, with plants to deal with, crushing, washing, inventory, um, suppliers, weather is a big factor for us, um, and, and quality assurance of the actual mixes themselves. Um, CJ, if you, if you Go to the next slide. Um, as you can imagine, from a 110 year plus old company, and, and keep in mind this is prior to computers actually being available, uh, they had to go through many, many phases of their digital transformation. And over the years, you know, they did make some significant upgrades to their platforms, um, moving, you know, the latest being moving their financial data into an ERP, Oracle Fusion, and uh, it really helped set the foundation. Uh, of a lot of their data and really the next phase was was for them to actually start leveraging that data uh, in key business insights and decisions so as you mentioned in in late last year Burnco made an investment and and the data analytics program itself was was born uh, I was brought on on board and we brought a small team of um, high performing individuals Alex being one of them from our, our partners at, at BDO. And we really wanted to be smart about the technology stack um, that we picked as an organization. So things we kept in mind, um, we wanted it to be cloud-based. 
uh, scalable for growth, obviously, uh, cost effective, something that allowed us to be agile. Um, this was kind of key for us as well. We needed to be able to pivot um, and, and be able to produce fast. Um, and we wanted to keep it simple for the organization to maintain after the initial build. So that sustainment layer um, is also really important for us uh, when we picked our, our technology stack. And, and with that, um, what we did was uh, we wanted to, to bring an initial idea and, and put it to test right away. Um, so our, our POC that you know we came up with um, as an organization, um, we needed to figure out profit margin after delivery per customer. It's our mum DK. MUMD calc um, KPI, if you will. Um, and historically, the business would take spreadsheets. We've all seen this in the past. You know, they dump their their spreadsheets from from different source systems. We have an on-prem uh, source system for our, our frontline systems, as you can tell, SQL Server. And then, um, since we moved all the financial data into the cloud, you know, they were pulling spreadsheets from all over the place. It's very manual, static data. Once you know you pull it out, um, and of course, you know, we wanted to take um, this and, and blend the data and actually create an enterprise scalable system for them to actually start using. Um, so in order to do that, you know, we as a team, we started to brainstorm the technology stack. And if, if you flip um, to the next slide, um, when we went through the technology stack, we, we really wanted to keep it simple and, and um, you know, use the technology, not, you know, code a bunch of stuff ourselves. Um, and we really wanted it to be best of breed in all areas of the stack. So we had identified, you know, five trend for ingestion, Snowflake for the data lake, um, warehouse and data in the cloud. Um, data sharing was a big portion of that. You know, we want to leverage that feature, especially for weathers, uh, things like that. Um, we identified and, and, and used Power BI for the presentation layer. Um, and there really was this, you know, missing piece, as you can see in the slide, that was that transformation uh, layer. And then we came across uh, your product, uh, Clolith, and uh, we found that it was it was kind of that perfect fit um, for us in that layer. layer. And um, I'm going to turn it over to Alex to speak to a, a few of the reasons why we chose that path. Thank you, ZJ. Thank you, Jody. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, so um, as Jody mentioned, uh, uh, the company um, it had they had some momentum, they had some reports, uh, but they needed to take advantage of the cloud. The cloud, I believe, is is causing a lot of uh, interesting modernization approaches. Uh, the modern data stack is 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 going mainstream, uh, in partly allowed by um, uh, platforms like like Snowflake. So in this new world that we were trying to come up for Brunco. Uh, as you already mentioned, agility, efficiency, efficiency was key. We really needed to pick the right tool set, the right uh, uh, architecture to enable uh, agility. And by what I mean by agility is uh, I were focused on driving business value, um, unlocking data to provide uh, value back to the business without um, retaining too much attention uh, on the on the technical side. So with this in mind, we need a tool that will allow us to do this and, and drive value back to the business quickly. From an architectural perspective, I not only wanted to be able to produce analytics artifacts quickly to, uh, to drive value back, but also take advantage of the current state of the world when it comes to version control, as I must have. Um, now I'm gonna turn a little bit more technical. Um, these thoughts, and I'm going to tell you a story a little bit, uh, just to go back to how these, how we landed in, in Coilist to be the actual balanced. Um, these thoughts brought me back to, to the beginning of my career 10 years ago uh, with my first mentor. Um, he was a CSUN data architect uh, that was showing me how in the late 90s he was building um, the highly popular at that time and brand new data warehouse following dimensional modeling techniques. Uh, proposed by La, uh, Ralph Kimball, uh, all within code. He was grinding all these merge clauses, all this code, all SQL based, as you know. Soon after, uh, and if you've been part of this uh, transition, soon after, uh, UA based 
tools uh, were built by vendors in an attempt to reduce complexity, um, bring development speed, and reduce specialized skill sets. And actually, I believe it, it worked quite nicely uh, to the point that until today, I see lots of companies um, in having these, these tool sets uh, um, working uh, in production today. This was the traditional ETL approach. Um, consultancy firms even went to the point that they started creating their own frameworks around this uh, to ob obviously bring development experience even faster uh, to their clients. The cloud obviously was the first big disruptor in, in, in this um, approach with the factor of modernization. Um, because ETL had uh, one of the disadvantages is that it, it, it leveraged local resources and the cloud obviously unlocks uh, a lot of el elasticity. So also something else, and not only the cloud, I believe something else happened on this transition to the cloud uh, that we're seeing in today's approaches. Um, the global trend now is to go everything as code. Um, I don't know if you've seen infrastructure as code, configuration as code, on top of obviously um, the, our own work that actually needs to happen to provide business value, uh, often on the form of SQL. SQL to me, in my opinion, is still the, the, the most common language uh, today for data. So on top of all these, we needed to still code our solutions in this, in, this, in this language, regardless of the approach. I believe that the introduction of Git and subsequently GitHub um, in the mid 2000s for, for all the DevOps revolution had a lot, of do, a lot to do with this trend. Having CICD and agile methodologies uh, used by software companies obviously enabled um, uh, rapid development with enough governance and best practices to ensure safe developments. Uh, all these um, are these now happening at the right abstraction, at the code level. I think the price to pay is once again going back to, to the early 90s. It is it's increasing complexity, slowing down development uh, in terms of business artifact. I just, right now, my core, my, my, my goal is to bring business value back. Uh, I'm in the analytics business. Uh, and also, I need to now increase my skill sets. Uh, to be able to support all this everything as code approach. As an architect that, that, pro, uh, that is focused on analytics, I wanted my tools to do all this. I wanted to be able to have a nice UI um, that will unlock development speeds and at the same time automate their patterns and that with, with a template-based framework. Think dimensional, think data uh, uh, dimensional modeling, or think data vault modeling techniques. But flexible enough that I, if I needed to create a template, I could also do it. Um, and also keeping the advantages of having all these objects represented as code for version control and support agile uh, the de development. This is why I think we selected Coiless. Coiless is this. Uh, perfect balance of, of uh, flexibility when it comes to having a UI that will allow my developers to, to focus on business solutions while maintaining a code-based approach that will also unlock um, agile methodologies. As an example, um, so we have this now completed the architecture where we have uh, five trunk dealing with ingestion, all automated, once set up, very simple. I don't know if you have an opportunity to, play, to, to use these ingestion uh, tools. Uh, Snowflake as the data centricity approach where everything happens within Snowflake, having my business logic stored, having my integration logic stored, and having my um, uh, presentation layer stored. Uh, all these following a data fabric approach and everything managed by Coles. Regardless of the data model, if it's if because of perhaps the presentation layer, in, my, in our case, we're using Power BI, uh, likes dimensional model uh, um, uh, to play better with this tool. We're following dimensional modeling techniques that are also uh, framework and templated already in Coalesce. So I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, uh, having to create this framework already, is provided by the tool. Um, and if we go to the next slide, please, CJ. Uh, we also had the, the um, use case where 
I needed to come up with a special type of node. If you're if you're familiar with uh, the latest trends, uh, uh, everything is uh, a template. It is a, 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 um, a type of of a, a component, an entity, uh, for to support Oracle Fusion data. I needed to work. I needed a specific template to work to co to pro produce my last object, my uh, my um, what I call the data lake object, the raw uh, object. Uh, for this, I needed help to develop a special template. Uh, I engaged Coalesce uh, Professional Services, and in a matter of a day, we were able to produce a brand new template that was not existed. And now, with the with the future vision of of Coalesce, um, we will be able to share specific templates that will unlock um, development speeds for future co uh, clients. Uh, coming back to Jody's uh, MomD uh, POC, uh, we were able to achieve uh, zero to to all the way to actually having uh, objects in the EDW layer in less than a month. To be precise, uh, it was one week of POC development and less than a week to actually move all this logic and, and put it in, in uh, coalesce. This to me is, is a very fast turnaround uh, that produce, produce value right, right in front uh, uh, in a matter of uh, three weeks. The last week was focused on the presentation layer to make sure that um, the, the, the uh, consumers were actually having the best possible analytics. Um, long story short, three months after, we have with one developer, that is highly specialized in SQL. And we don't use uh, you know, a heavily advanced SQL, but the, all the business logic is encoded in here. We have several integrations going. Um, we have uh, over 600 plus nodes in our DAGs and three data models uh, in production today. This is me working 20% of my time on my capacity in, in actually developing code, and uh, one full-time uh, uh, developer with SQL knowledge. We don't have uh, to ingest, we don't have to get good at any other templated um, language because Coalesce does all this abstraction for us. Uh, to me, this is a huge advantage. Um, and it just proves that uh, this is the right uh, architecture for us. Great, thanks, Alex. So pretty pretty fantastic story, right? Being able to, to build out you know, a, a POC and a first iteration of a production warehouse in, in two or three weeks. And then, you know, after three months, 600 tables, right? Um, but, you know, how, how does this all work? What, what really makes Coalesce different? Um, and, you know, kind of like Alex was saying, right, when, when we were building Coalesce, the, the problem we're trying to solve for is how do you give a data engineer uh, or a developer a tool that, that both has the efficiency of a GUI um, but without sacrificing the flexibility of a code first approach, right? And we solve that problem uh, by what we call our column aware architecture. And what that really means is that Coalesce is aware of every column in the data warehouse. So really creative name, right? Um, but you know, we use the, the column level metadata as kind of the building block of everything going on in the UI. And that allows us to give our customers a much more granular, much more flexible UI than anything else on the market. Um, but because we have that column aware architecture, there's kind of a couple of things that we can offer that are, that are game changers, right? The first is, um, is, is column level lineage, right? So the tool is aware of how every single column in the data warehouse is flowing through all of the different tables through all of your pipelines. Um, and then on top of that, we're actually able to automate the vast majority of the SQL that you would otherwise have to write by hand uh, with any other tool or if you're doing things manually. Um, and this has a couple of consequences, right? The first is just a Greenfield Snowflake project uh, is gonna go so much faster as evidenced by Burnco, right? So if you're building out a brand new data warehouse on Snowflake, um, to give you an example, something like building a slowly changing dimension uh, you know, so dimension table that's tracking address changes or phone changes. Um, writing out all that logic would, you know, depending on the tool you're using, take somewhere between 30 minutes and two hours, depending on who's doing it. Um, in Coalesce, that takes about 30 seconds. It's a couple of clicks. It generates the code. You push it down to Snowflake, and you're and you're done. Um, 
And because of this, you kind of extrapolate that out to 500 tables, 5,000 tables, right? All of a sudden, a two-week project takes four hours, a three-month project takes a week, um, you know, a six-month project takes a couple of weeks, right? You're getting so much, you're getting value out of Snowflake so much faster, um, you know, and getting a return on that investment. Uh, so that's the first piece. And it doesn't have to be a greenfield project, right? This is very helpful for migrations as well, where before you're moving off of Oracle or SQL Server and putting that schema directly on Snowflake, you know, that's, that's one way to do it. But a lot of times it doesn't make sense to just copy and paste a schema, right? Um, you want to kind of build things with best practices, but it would take so long previously to pull that off that it wasn't really an option. With Coalesce, you're able to kind of rebuild things from scratch so much faster. Um, so moving from Oracle, SAP, SQL Server onto Snowflake, um, you're able to, to kind of build the data warehouse you want on Snowflake really quickly. Um, the second Use case though, that in, in where things get really interesting is change management, right? Once the data warehouse already exists and Bernco is experiencing this right now, you have 600 tables in your data warehouse, you need to add a column somewhere, right? And that column needs to be propagated to 50 other tables. You know, using other tools or doing it manually, um, you're gonna have to rebuild each one of those columns or each one of those tables with the new column. Um, you're going to have to map it all out. You're going to have to re rewrite all the SQL. You're going to have to do it correctly, which is very difficult to do correctly the first time. Document everything. It takes a long time, and it creates a rift between IT and the business when you're trying to make changes quickly and give the business results. In Coalesce, because we can automate all the SQL and because we have all that column-level lineage, you can just select which tables you'd like to propagate changes to, um, and all of the code is immediately rewritten, it's correct the first time, it's all documented, you have all the lineage, so you're able to make changes so much faster. Uh, which, you know, to go back to what Jody was saying, giving the business something that's easy to manage after that initial build um, and easy to make changes to. And then lastly, everything's standardized, right? If you give seven different engineers a project to build the same table, um, they're all gonna code it seven different ways if they're doing it manually. In Coalesce, you are, uh, generating the same best practice Snowflake SQL every single time. Um, it's efficient. It's going to save you money because, you know, you're paying for that compute, so you want it to be efficient. Uh, but then on top of that, you can have confidence in giving this to, you know, a, a lower, level, lower level developer who, you know, maybe you wouldn't be confident in the SQL that they're writing, but you, you can set those standards now. Um, and then on top of that, you have that lineage, you have that documentation automatically generated for you. So it's so much more organized um, and so much more standardized. So all that to say, um, that's what we're about. You know, we're able to make these claims all day long, but let's actually show you what we have going on here. So Satish, I will pass it off to you uh, to show us a demo. Awesome. <clears throat> Thank you, CJ. Uh, let me share my screen. Need the presenter. There you go. Can you all see my screen? Perfect. All right. Cool. Um, so, Call S is a software as a service uh, product. Um, all, there's nothing to install. You know, all you need is a browser and a login. So once you um, log in, you would see the following interface. There's two tabs at the top. Here you see the build tab and the deploy tab. So the, the build tab is where, you know, as a data engineer, you would spend most of your time building what we call the graph, or some people call it the DAG or SQL pipeline. Um, and, and the deploy tab is, you know, once you build the, uh, the graph you want to deploy it, you want to move it from one environment to the other, basically doing the DevOps. So that's what the deploy tab is used for. Uh, one prerequisite here is, uh, you know, the data must already be sitting in Snowflake. We are purely a transformation tool. Um, so the raw data or whatever form the data lands in Snowflake, that would be our starting point. As far as connecting to Snowflake, we support all kinds of authentication mechanisms that 
Snowflake support. Um, and it's a matter of minutes to kind of set up that connectivity. Um, so in this case, I have um, that connection set up to my Snowflake instance, and I have some tables sitting in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding those tables here, and we call them nodes. <clears throat> nodes, since this is a graph, uh, and then we're going to build, start building the pipeline from there. So I'll click on this here to add the sources. So basically, he's looking at my account and looking at my you know, um, privileges to see what database uh, and schemas that I have access to. This is the list of database schemas. Uh, and if I expand, I can see the tables. You know, I can select, you know, the tables that I want to add. Um, I can also sample the data just to see what the data looks like before I bring it in. Or I can just add all of the tables that are in that schema. So there's eight, um, you know, eight nodes in this case. Once you add it to the graph, we refer to them as nodes, as I said before. Um, you can have different types of nodes uh, on this graph, and we'll talk more about that. But for now, since these are representing our source tables, we refer to them as source nodes. If I click on any one of these, I can actually look at the structure of the table. I can see the columns. I can see the data types. I can also fetch the data just to see, uh, again, what the data looks like in these. Now, let's say based on this customer node, I want to create another type of nodes. It could be a dimension, it could be a stage node or whatever. But if I right click here, uh, you can see there's the add node and there's a whole bunch of nodes that are in my repository. This is not the complete list. And also you can make your own node type. That is one of the powerful aspects of the tool. But for now, let's say, you know, you have these, some kind of, you know, deduplication and data profiling nodes, some data vault nodes, <clears throat> some dimensional model nodes, or you can build, you know, whatever node you want. So in this case, I can directly add a dimension here, or I might say, hey, maybe I want to apply some rules. So let's, let's add a stage node. Now I can do this one node at a time, or I can do for all nodes. Um, so that flexibility is there. Once I added that stage node, you can see that this stage node has its own color bar. It has its own prefix. Uh, so it is a different type of uh, node. And in this case, it has its own configuration. You can see this is the configuration that goes with a stage node. Um, and in the bottom, you see there is the create and the run buttons. Create would actually create this table on table or view or however you want to materialize. Uh, on Snowflake, and run would actually populate the table uh, with whatever rules that you specify, it generates the SQL and runs, that's your transformation logic. And this configuration on the right-hand side is specific to a particular node. For instance, this is a stage node, that's why it has this truncate before option. Basically, what that means is every time you run this, it's going to truncate the data and redo it, uh, reload it. So, um, and this is a column level mapping. You can see this is basically the same exact structure as the customer, because that's what we use to create this one. Now at this point, if I hit that create button, it generates the create table statement for us. And you can see that is run on Snowflake. Now I have a table called STG underscore customer. Now, I can change the name of the table, I can change the column names, I can change the data types, which we'll do that in a minute here. But that's, if I don't do anything, if I'm just creating as is, I'm basically replicating that customer table. Um, and if I fetch the data now, so there's not going to be anything in there because it's this empty table that we just created. And if I hit run, it's going to now read the data from the customer table and load it into this. So. Again, at this point, all we did is just replicated that customer table as is and loaded into stage. And you can always see what SQL uh, is running behind the scenes. In this case, because our truncate option is on, you can see they first truncated it and then it generated an insert statement. And this is insert into stage and select. So it's very simple, very straightforward here. 
Now let's say um, we want to do some transformations. Now let's start with some basic transformations here. So you have, for example, you have this customer name. And I might say, I want to change this into uppercase. So I can just go use the upper function that's available on Snowflake. I mean, this is basically a string function that is uh, available with Snowflake. So you can use that. You can use anything that is valid on Snowflake here in the transformation. Now, if I want to do this, so now you can see that it is capitalized. But if I want to do the same thing on multiple columns, I can easily select all of those and say, hey, bulk edit and do this something similar. But now this time applying the same rule, but on, on multiple, uh, multiple columns. We, can, we have these helper tokens available everywhere that you can use. Now you can see that same rule got applied on all those, um, all those columns. So I can run it and reload that. Now all it's doing behind the scenes is generating SQL. I can add a new column, just clicking here and giving it a name and data type, or I could take an existing column and, and duplicate it. So in this case, let's say we want to label the customers as gold and silver customers based on their uh, account balance. So I can do something like case, you know, when customer dot account balance is greater than 5,000, then let's call them gold customers, else call them silver. Very straightforward. And I can always validate the SQL. Um, and I can also use this right hand pane to uh, cut and paste large transforms or just type in large with autocomplete available for you. Since this is a label, I'm going to change the data type. You can also validate the SQL just to make sure there's no typos or anything, syntax errors. So at this point, I've added a new column. So I'm going to go ahead and create that and run it. So now I should see the customer rating column created and populated. So it's again, if you look at the SQL, um, it's all there. The SQL statement now has all of those transformation functions uh, in, in the rules that we have applied. Now I can, you know, filter the customer data. I can do joins. I can, I can build a series of these stage tables to break down a complex logic and achieve whatever transformation that I want to achieve. But once the data is prepared, you might say, now I want to create that end user node. Whatever methodology you're using, it could be dimensional model, it could be, you know, data vault, or it could be just flat tables. It doesn't matter for Coalesce because we have we're giving you a platform that you can adopt any type of methodologies and build any type of nodes. Um, so in this case, I'll just um, you know, create a dimension because maybe that's the way we want to share our data with the business. So I'm going to right click again, same uh, way that we created the stage. In this case, add node and pick the node type that you want. In this case, I'm going to do dimension. Now, again, as you can see, it's a different color and a different prefix, but more importantly, it's different configuration on the right-hand side. If you recall for the stage nodes, there was a truncate option here, but for the dimensions, now the options, the configuration options look entirely different because that's what a node type is. A node type is what is the configuration that's available that goes with it and how does it behave when you hit that create button and run button. So that's what makes a node type different from each other. So in this case, what I have instead is I have a business key that now I have to uh, input. So I'm going to just select the business key. And optionally, I also have this change tracking columns. So if the customer changes their address or phone number, for instance, and your requirement is that I don't want to overwrite in the target table, instead I want to create versions of the records, um, you know, you, you pick the columns that you want to track changes on, and you select those. And by doing that, you just made that dimension, what people call it a type two dimension. Now, again, what it means is rather than overwriting the target values, you're creating versions of these records. So you can always report point in time, you know, uh, values. Like if you say, where did the customer live at a given point in time? You can do that with this type of um, table structure. 
Uh, there's also a surrogate key and there's some system columns. Uh, one important thing to note here is uh, everything that you see is configurable. So essentially, you can make your own node type. You can create this own configuration. You can create the templates for the create and the run, and you can control all of those. Think of these as Legos that you can put together and assemble to build a node type that would fit your needs. So in this case, this is something that's out of the box, but you can use this to either extend it or modify it or start from you. So I'm going to go ahead and create this node because I have everything that I need. And all I do is just create that. The table gets created now on Snowflake. And then when I hit run, it's going to use this information, the business key, the change tracking columns, the system columns, the surrogate key, all of those. And it says, I have a template to do this. I'm going to go ahead and load, create the table and load the data. Now we have just done all of that. And you can see the start date, end date, effectivity dates, all of that logic is built uh, in, you know, in, a, in an instant. So you can see uh, in the results, the actual SQL that got you know, executed. This is a merge statement. And you can see this is this logic that you would need to implement such a type two dimension uh, where you are able to track versions of the records. And if you were to do this on Snowflake, this is what you would do in SQL. Um, on Snowflake. And, and imagine you have this type two dimension needs all over the place. You can see the productivity boost that you might get uh, as you build more and more of this. Um, you know, once you, once you build that, um, you might say, hey, now I have the pipeline. Again, for demo purposes, I'm going to keep this pipeline small here. In real world, you know, like Born Coast or others, they're pretty large, as you can imagine. Um, so in this case, what I'm going to do is, um, let's say you take this dim customer and sh start sharing with your departments. You might say, hey, I want to create a view on top of this, and I want to share that with finance. So let's call that view, finance view. Um, and Maybe finance doesn't care about this customer rating and market segments and all of this stuff. I'm going to just delete those columns so they don't have that. So they just have these columns. And for marketing, however, they might need everything. So we're going to create a view for them. And this is just one way to kind of share. I'm not proposing that this is the only way to do this. But uh, let's say you, you do it this way and you have all the columns uh, in the marketing view. Now, this is the pipeline that you built and you, you know, you checked into Git, which we have Git integration right here, and you deployed into your environments, whatever environment, QA, prod. Um, a few months go by, everything is great, but, you know, as you may have expected, finance is saying, hey, there's new columns coming in, uh, in the customer table. I want to add that column or columns to my view. Now, if this graph were to be you know, 30, 40 nodes uh, and a lot of joins and a lot of transformations, then you're faced with a mini project. You, know, you have a, a project and I've personally spent sometimes more than a week or two weeks to do those kind of things where I have to first understand what's the impact. If new columns are coming in, I need to understand what the impact is going to be on my existing pipeline. And the second part of that is once you understand the impact, you have to now go and make the change, the, the changes necessary. That's changing the structures of the tables, so altering tables um, and adjusting the logic, making sure you don't break anything, you know, make creating new versions, testing the code. So there's a lot of work that's involved just to do this right. However, in because of the column awareness that we have built into the product from the ground up, we are able to do this in a much more elegant fashion. So um, let's say, let's simulate this for now because, you know, let's say there's a new column coming in and uh, you can always, you know, kind of resync here to figure out what columns, but you can't modify the source table directly from here. Instead, I'm going to say, hey, let's pretend like there's a new column coming in. 
uh, here, let's call this new column. And I'm going to give it a data type. So this is the new column. And I want to understand, as I said, there's two parts. The first part is the impact analysis. What's the, what's going to, what's the impact, um, you know, because of this change on my pipeline. So that's the first thing. And the way you do that is you right click and you say, show me the column lineage for this. So once you do that, this is the column lineage uh, diagram for this. So this is the new column. And since we are, we uh, launched this diagram from the stage customer, that's why this is highlighted in blue. And we are inspecting the new column. That's why that's highlighted in blue as well. You can see there's these circles with T's. Those indicate transformation rules. So if you recall, those are the rules that we have added at the beginning of the demo. And you can see there are in other places as well. So you kind of get an, uh, a view, like an understanding of, hey, how many transformation rules are here in, in, within this pipeline? Uh, so you can see what those are by hovering over those. Now, if I click on any one of these, you can see how these columns are connected. So for example, I have this address column. That column exists in both finance view and marketing view. Whereas marketing segment column is only in the marketing view. So this way I can kind of get an idea on, okay, what is that I need to do here? So if for the new column uh, to, to be able to add it to finance, first thing I want to add that to the uh, customer dimension, and then add it to the finance. So what uh, I can do here is go here and say, propagate edition. Once I hit that button, this is going to go into a preview mode. So this is basically in a preview mode. Um, in this preview mode, you can choose where you want to propagate that column to. So I'm going to propagate that to BIM customer. I'm going to propagate that to finance view, but not to the marketing view. And I can, I can preview this. I'm not making the change yet. I'm going to preview this and this is going, this is showing me how it would look like once things get wired up. Um, and if I'm happy with this, I'm going to go ahead and say apply. And after one more confirmation, just to make sure, uh, this is going to go through and make those changes. It's going to alter those tables, recreate them, generate the code, um, and it's ready to go. So if you see in the um, marketing view, you would not see the new column, but if you see here in the finance view, the new column is there. So that's how you're able to kind of mitigate the risk. And when you have to make changes, um, you know, uh, it, it's much easier and cost effective. And then one final thing that I want to touch upon in this is the aspect of creating your own node types, which is a very, very powerful uh, feature. Um, so when I right click on any of these nodes, I'm seeing a whole bunch of these nodes. These are the node types that are available in my repository, as I said. Um, you can actually create your own node type. And what is a node type? So if you look at behind the scenes, this is the list of nodes that you're seeing in that right click menu. Uh, this, these, and some more here. Um, and, you know, either you can start uh, from scratch a new node type, or you can take any one of these node types and say, hey, the stage one is probably very close. It behaves very closely the, the way I want. However, I want to modify it. So I can just duplicate that. And then if you edit this, here's what you will see. There are three things here. This is what a node type is. There's three things. There's the first thing, the node definition. The second is the create template. The third is the run template. As a person who is creating these node types, we call them user-defined nodes or UDNs for short. If you are the person who wants to create a UDN, this is what you need to implement. You need to implement the node definition. And then you need to implement the create template. 
and then the run template. Once you do that, this item is going to be uh, appearing in that right-click menu in the graph, and other engineers in your team or yourself, you can just reuse it over and over. Um, so if you call this, for example, uh, test node, I can give it a name here, a prefix, and a color bar just to differentiate this. And from here is the configuration. Uh, this is all YAML. And you can see this configuration is rendered as UI. In the graph, when they double click on that, this is what's going to be rendered. Um, so let's take a look at that. For instance, if I go here and add a test node, and I double click on that, you see the configuration. This is what is rendered. So coming back to this node definition again, um, these configurations here, they can be altered. But for instance, there is one configuration item called materialization selector. What this is, is what are the options that you want to give to the user when they use the test node in terms of materialization? Can they create it as a table? Can they create it as a view? Can they create it as a materialized view? And so on. So you can add those options or even remove some of the options. So if I remove that, you can see it's gone. So you can control this uh, multi-source. Maybe I say, I don't want to give this multi-source option, so it's gone. So this is what, you're almost like coding your own GUI here. So you, you do this, and then once you define what you want to give, uh, here in the create template, this is all Jinja. Uh, you can reference or refer to those configurations, like for instance, if the materialization is table, then go ahead and generate this statement. If it is a view, go ahead and generate this statement and so on. So you can reference those configuration items in these templates. In the run template, it's the processing logic. In the create template, it's the DDL or the creation of, of those objects on Snowflake. With this type of control, basically the sky is the limit for you what you can do uh, because whatever is possible on snowflake you can kind of package those things according to your needs and kind of create these node types as an architect set the standards set the guardrails and and kind of unleash that to the rest of the team and they can start using just by right clicking and going really really fast that's how you get the speed and the agility that um Alex has been talking about. I think that's uh, that's that's what we have the time for. I can go all day long, but you know. agree. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Satish. Uh, <clears throat> well, if you if you throw uh, the presenter mode back over to me, we do have a couple of questions that have come in. We have a few minutes for uh, for Q and A. Um, well, actually, the first one. Um, here, let me share my screen. Okay, great. Um, so first one for you, Satish, that's come in. Um, we, we had a question about, about testing. Um, we're, I know we're done with the, the demo portion, but will you touch on the testing capabilities just really quick? Yeah, the testing capabilities, um, they are in the tool. Um, so you can write tests at a node level or at a column level. It's basically, um, you know, when I double clicked on that node, you see on the right hand side, you saw the configuration. There's also a testing tab where you can go and just select, um, you know, what columns and what tests you want to run. Just click, 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 like unique, you know, null test and things like that. Um, or, and also at the node level, you can say, hey, if I want to, for example, uh, write a node level test or, or referencing multiple nodes even. You're basically saying um, a test like, hey, the total amount in this table for this column cannot be more than $1 million or whatever. Then you write the query there to return a failing record. So if it returns those exceptions, that means it's a failure. Uh, but to answer your question at a high level, 
it's all there in, it, to to be able to test these. Awesome. Uh, we had a couple questions come in, one around support of data vault method methodology and another uh, that asks, can you generate if not exists instead of or replace? And uh, the answer to both of those is, is similar, right? It's anything that's supported by Snowflake can be done through Coalesce. So absolutely, you know, the various SQL statements doesn't matter. You can, you can make Coalesce generate whatever you want. Um, and then data vault, you know, if, as Satish was going through those node types, um, you know, if you notice you had hubs, links, satellites in there, pits and bridges, anything, um, anything supported by data vault 2.0, you can do in the tool. Um, we, we all kind of have a, a heavy data vault background. So, um, absolutely. Uh, and, and really any other mo modeling technique that you want to, um, undertake, I mean, we're giving, Coalesce gives you maximum flexibility. Uh, another question that came in, um, managing dependencies between data pipelines or nodes, inner node, and maybe nodes to nodes. Satish, can you touch on yeah. that? Yeah, so basically, uh, you know, when you build this DAG, um, the dependencies between the nodes are already there because these lines are the order of execution. So if you run this dim customer, uh, sorry, you're not seeing my screen, right? Um, uh, so basically what you saw in the graph, those lines that are connecting to the nodes, those are dependencies. Um, and if you want to do graph to graph dependencies, we have a concept called subgraphs uh, in jobs. So basically you kind of create a slice of these graphs and say, I want to run this graph first, and then you run the next graph, um, you know, after that. So th you can pretty easily do that uh, with those kind of dependencies. And also to add to, add to that comment, uh, Satish, uh, one of the advantages of, of Coalesce is that you can do exactly the same thing at a column level, um, even with our formation. So let's say you have a, a full name that concatenates first and last name, the lineage will respect both the transformation. Um, so you know, that two, one, one specific concatenated field will actually come from two in the source uh, system. That that has been a weak point in very multiple tools until now. Um, that helps a lot for for true impact analysis. So uh, the questions are, are really flowing in now. We're we're not going to be able to get to all of them, but we we will be in touch and and answer any questions that you guys have. Um, and if you're interested in doing a, a bit of a deeper dive demo, um, feel free to, to get in touch with us through our website. Um, we're happy to uh, to dive in with any of you and, and kind of uh, answer all the questions that you have. Uh, there's one about changing uh, materialization from a table to a view. Um, that's quick and easy to answer. Absolutely, it's a click of a button just in that right-hand panel uh, that you saw before. Um, a couple questions that had come in early. Um, one was how did you choose Snowflake for your cloud data warehouse instead of Azure Data Warehouse or another platform? Um, yeah, I'm not sure if we said it explicitly, but we are a, a Snowflake native tool where we only support Snowflake at this time. Um, and the reason for that is um, we're we're big fans of Snowflake. I mean, we've been in the space for uh, for a long time. Uh, you know, respectively, the the folks you know behind the scenes here at Coalesce, and and we've kind of worked with a bunch of different ones. Personally, I was at HVR and Fivetran before this, and was on all kinds of projects with Azure Data Warehouse and uh, Databricks and BigQuery and all all of these. Um, you know, we see data or we, we see Snowflake as as the leader in the in the data cloud. It's it's from our perspective the most robust tool and the one that we wanted to kind of dive in on and create the most uh, robust transformation solution possible, um, and and so yeah, we're we're committed to Snowflake, and we couldn't recommend it enough. Uh, and then the last question: what what sets you apart from other transformation tools? Uh, nice uh, May the Fourth joke in there for you. We call it the Force, uh, but no, really, this this comes back to our uh, column aware architecture that I was talking about, right? It's we we kind of our our tagline is the only data transformation tool built for scale, and it, it really comes back to that idea of the scalability and the efficiency of a GUI 
without sacrificing any of that flexibility, right? Because of that column aware architecture, that's what's really uh, unique to Coalesce. Um, so all that to say, um, thank you guys so much for joining us. Alex and Jody, thank you for uh, for telling us your story. Um, this, was, this was fantastic. Uh, if anyone has any questions, um, please reach out. And um, it, it's worth noting as well, Coalesce is available for free for the first 50 nodes. Um, and you can go access that on our website. So if you guys wanna get uh, your hands on the tool, head to, to coalesce.io um, and, and give it a spin. Um, so we're, we're excited to, to work with you guys and, and uh, answer any questions that you might have moving forward. But thanks again for joining us and, and have a good day. Thank you guys. Thank you.